who don't know me, what I do is I train people for a living. That's what I do. I train on management, leadership, negotiation, soft skills. So today I thought I'll uh, give you a very quick uh, rundown on what is empowerment and how to motivate people. I teach on motivation, but you cannot motivate a person. You can only create the atmosphere and the circle in which people are motivated. So, yes, we can, is the name of my speech. What would you say all these people have in common? Uh, now, what does uh, Bill Gates with Steve Jobs and uh, Christina Aguilera and all these people have in common? Well, let me tell you, they are college dropouts. I do not intend you to <laughs> drop college to be a successful entrepreneur. I'm just saying, Anybody can do it. This is the classic story of the elephant that he cannot break loose from a small uh, uh, thing in, in a small pole in, in the ground because he has, and he's huge, he can do it if he wants, but he has memory of himself being beaten up when he was a little elephant, and that memory stays with the elephant for the rest of his life and he's afraid to move on. The thing is, he can do it, he's huge. Of course he can do it. Not only he can do it, but he must do it, he should do it. Most of the entrepreneurs today who have great ideas, they owe to themselves, to their education, to their background, they must do things, they should do things. It is very important to be real realists in life, but it's equally important to be ambitious. In this movie, there is a very good saying that uh, the reason that uh, we do not dare is not that things are so difficult. Things are difficult because we do not dare. I don't know if you are familiar with uh, Sir Ken Robinson. Now, Sir uh, Robinson was knighted for his services to education. He has written an excellent book called The Element, Finding Your Element, Tostichius, as we say in Greek. That's very important because every person has deep inside some very high qualities that if you can raise them appropriately, you can get great things done in life. In his book, he talks about uh, various, uh, he gives many examples, various people. He talks about Adriana Stasinopoulos, who when she thought she would go to Cambridge University, everybody laughed and they, she said, I want to go and study at Cambridge. And everybody laughed with her. Well, she did make it. And then she said, I'm going to be president, president of the debating society at Cambridge. You cannot be a female president at that time, female president. Now, she was not intimidated by the saying that no female can be a female president of the Cambridge debating society. So she did and she succeeded. Today, she has an empire in the United States. Of course, she married Huffington, but nevertheless, <laughs> she's very successful. The thing is, she dare get out of bed and do things. Ken Robinson also talks about Gillian Lynn, a very hyper child. That as a child, everybody was suggesting for her mother to put her in medication because she was too hyperactive. All what she was was a great dancer. She was the choreographer of the Phantom of the Opera and the choreographer of Cats and many others. Today, she's very happily living in the States. And if she was to fall, to listen to some people who taught her down, she would have never succeeded in life. Maybe you recognize Paul McCartney here. <laughs> well, you see, this is Robinson says to us that this is the music class that he attended in Liverpool back in those days. And Paul McCartney and George Harrison were in the music class of this English lady that she thought very little of, of them. She said to them, you are ignorant about music, you are incapable about music. Can you imagine? He says, you don't play well. You are too radical. These things don't go well. You never make it in this business. Get out of this business. Study something else. Little did she know. She was nurturing two of the Beatles. I mean, who would have thought? Imagine she had half the Beatles in her class and she never realized what she had in her class. And she gave them very low marks. You see, some people are very weak will, and some people dare to go forward. And the whole idea is to dare to go forward when everybody says don't do it. The whole idea is to take a step forward when everybody says no, you cannot do it. You cannot be judged by these people. 
The water is too cold. Don't do this. Make a step back. So we used to step back from fear. She was afraid to go and be paid. But she's a model, that's her job. Stepping back. She was afraid to give the report to her manager because fear has been built into her memory. And that's why people don't dare to do great things. She comes back from the toilet and she sees her boyfriend talking to another girl. And what does she do? She do a step back. She takes a step back. This is like the big bad wolf that intimidates us and does not let us progress in life. Well, you know how to dance. Go there and show them what you can do. The water will be warm after a while. Your temples will be used to the body. And you are a model, you are paid, it's an exam, they have to pay you. You worked on this exam, go and give it to your manager. You spent so many hours. And this boyfriend, this guy is your boyfriend, go and give him a kiss. And let the other lady know who is the business here. And then you will realize that this big bad wolf was nothing but the fiction of your imagination. It goes just in your imagination. It doesn't really exist. Aristotle once put the head of Alexander the Great under the water, up to the point where Alexander started inhaling instead of water. <laughs> he was taking in water, and then he let him spring back to surface, and he said to him, if you want to succeed as much as you wanted to breathe under water, then you will succeed. So the question is for young entrepreneurs, how much do you want to really succeed? Because if you do, you will do it. Who would ever imagine, Professor Lee, out of all these US presidents, that one day it will be a black one? I mean, this used to be unthinkable in the United States. Yet, he did and he did it. Anybody can step forward and can do things. This is a typical uh, uh, emotional uh, change, when, uh, emotional uh, reaction when things change in your life. So all these people, great people, talk about the same graph. I'll be very quick, but in general terms, in the beginning, people are happy, then they're anxious, then they're scared, then they're afraid, and then they get upset, and then they say, let's try, and then they embrace change. You will find this in all books regarding change. This is what it's all about. This morning, we've also heard that unless you are willing and you have vision to be you know, innovative, you will not succeed. And this is absolutely true. One of the measures of our innovation is called CQ, Creative Quotient, like we have IQs, EQ, and etc. And that, that's one of the qualities that I teach, actually, in, in, in companies. If I give you one euro, and you give me one euro, how much it's here? One euro. We both have one euro. We exchange euros. But if I give you an idea, and you give me one idea, then we both, each of us, have two ideas. If people work together, then they, they can achieve more in life. And that's the whole idea. If you Google uh, manage your energy, not your time, you will see what we trainers talk about. We stop talking about time management. This is old fashioned. Right now, I train on energy management. And you will find many articles uh, regarding this. There are four sources of energy that people can really achieve things. One of them is emotional energy, the other is spiritual energy, the other is mental energy, and the other is physical energy. If we concentrate on these energies, because that's where time comes from, if you, if you are really exhausted, then time is ticking, but you cannot work anymore. But if you know the secret of how to fill up your batteries again, if we say, then time is not constrained because time goes down at the end of the day, but not your energy. It can go up and down, up and down, up and down. It's up to you if you know how to do this, because this is what I train, of course. Some people say, but I cannot do these things. I cannot achieve those things. And I say, you couldn't. You were not able. Don't say, I am not able. You were not. Don't try and predetermine what will happen in your life from now on. That's not the quality of entrepreneurs. The way we see the problem, each problem, that is the problem. The way we see the problem, there are no problems. You see, these ladies, each of them have different values and qualities. There's nothing right or wrong about this. There's nothing wrong. You cannot say to one of these ladies, it's wrong that you want a family. It's wrong that you want to sleep with whatever. It's wrong to do this. No. Everybody sees things from her own point of view. 
And that's the idea. By the way, in my personal opinion, this is not an economic crisis we're going through the world. And it's not a political crisis either, as we've heard this morning. I believe this is an ethical crisis that led to the economic crisis. Iraktos, 3,000 years ago, used to say the same things that Einstein repeated, that everything moves, everything will change. We see, we feel, we change. This is part of life. This is not just coming from John Cotter, modern uh, uh, guru regarding change, but it's coming thousands of years now from all experts. We have no control over the wings. wings. We can only adjust our sails. Now, the really, truly successful entrepreneurs, they actually believe they have control over the wings. wings. This is the opening up the mind and they try. That's the quality of the people who succeed, that they dream big. Of course we can, anybody can do it. When Stephen Covey came in Greece, uh, Stephen Covey is the author of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I commute, uh, con uh, discussed with him and conveyed to him that ethos, pathos, logos, the Aristotelian logic, uh, it's very well said in his eighth principle, but there is something extra called philotimo, love of honor. So if we have love of honor, if we're honest and honorable people, I don't believe we'll have another economic crisis. That's my personal opinion. I communicated this to him and he promised me maybe in the future we'll see it on a ninth principle, I don't know, in his books coming out. So let me tell you, when he came to my stand and he saw all these sayings that I have in frames in uh, my company, some of them are his own words, like you, you don't close a sale, you open a relationship, systems make things possible, people make things happen. He says, he sees some very, very well-known uh, sayings to him and he says to me, oh my God, John, this is what, actually what he was saying this very minute. We have everything has been already been said, but because no one was listening, we have to start all over again. So it's a good thing you're publicizing all this. This is my son. One day he comes to me and says, oh, dad, I'm tired. You've told me this before. You're repeating yourself. You've said this a thousand times over. Oh, my God. So I say to him, come here. And I put my lips next to his ear. And I say to him, my dad, too, was repeating himself many times over. My son uh, learns English now. So he steps back and says, I rest my case. I say, come back, come back here. I put my lips into his ear and I say again. I wish he was here today, as I would let him repeat it as much as he wanted. And of course, he's, he misses his granddad. So he gives me a kiss, he stays still, and then he says to me, OK, go, tell me what you want to say. Couple of weeks later, I said to him, can I say to you something that maybe I've said before, but I don't remember? He looks at me, he smiles, says, OK, go, say it. So I won the right to repeat things with him. This was like a little project with me. And I see little projects, projects everywhere in life. Do I go and solve these projects or do I argue with someone? What I decided to do is to publish a series of DVDs that everything I wanted to say to my son is now on a seminar on DVD. I wanted to say to him how to handle crisis, how to handle women, how to handle his boss, how, how to be innovative. And I put them on DVD. There is a brochure outside if you want to go through and see. This is my heritage to my son. So what I did, and the reason I saw you is, uh, I brought one of the DVDs. Now every DVD has also a CD, audio CD. Now everybody says this is too American, doesn't exist in Greek. But if you're stuck in traffic, you can listen to the same. So the DVD is here, the CD is here. This is how your family business can take off, but the uh, uh, CD in here to talk about relationship selling. So this was just a sample that the printer sent me in order to validate the colors and all that. So it was left. DVD is missing. Another title here, another title here. Just one. Does anybody want it? I, I want to give it up for free. Does anybody want it? It's in Greek, unfortunately. Sorry, no subtitles. Does anybody want it? I have only one and I want to give it for free. And unfortunately, there's a... Here. You can have. The thing is that uh, everybody, everybody wanted this DVD. 
but it was only our Italian friend who stood up and took the DVD. So you see, that's what's happening in life. You say, yeah, yeah, I want to succeed. Well, are you willing to get out of your comfort zone and do something? Because she did get out of her comfort zone. Well done, Kiara, well done for you. You did get out of the comfort zone. And that's the ingredient of successful people. If you don't like darkness, if you don't like the dark, just get up and light a candle. Why you sit there crying and lampy again when it's dark? Do something about it. What's the prerequisite in order to see, to live a miracle? Well, everybody knows. It's faith. If you don't believe, you don't see miracles. But if you believe, you see miracles. In any religion, you see miracles. Okay. Uh, how Gardner uh, and uh, Daniel Goldman says to us, we are constructed in such a way that our mind needs spiritual, social intelligence to progress. We are made in a way that it's good for us, that we believe passionate in something. Okay, maybe I can say it in a modern way. I see many have apples here, okay, okay. Maybe you can say, I go, okay, fine. The thing is, do you have faith in your beliefs, in your endeavors, in your entrepreneurial ideas? something. This went into the Guinness Book of Records, the biggest shiitake on the planet in Aya Napa in Cyprus. Some people believed it and they did it. If you don't believe, then you cannot succeed. Some time ago, back in 1946, a great Greek writer, Nikos Kazantzakis, wrote a novel. The novel was called Zorba the Greek. Later, 1964, another Greek composer, Mikis Theodorakis, wrote music for Zorba. It has been publicized all over the world and it was also made a film, a DVD. This is the original book, it has been translated into many languages all over the world. This is the CD. Whenever I would go with my wife to a restaurant, and I would listen to Zorba the Greek playing, I would say to her, oh my God, this is for the tourists, let's get out. Because I never realized what Nikos Kazadzakis was writing about. I thought it was just for fun. And I read the book, but I forgot about it. In the last scene, Anthony Quinn was told by Alan Bates, will you teach me to dance? And Anthony Quinn says, dance? Did you say, dance? You see, what happened here is that they had their business destroyed. Down to pieces. Will you? The whole factory, if you've seen the movie, dance. has gone down. Did you say, There was nothing left. Dance. And then he says to him, Did you say dance? Come on, my boy. Come on, my boy. And this is an example of people who succeed in life and they don't give up Together. in the first difficulty. Zorba exists into every one of us, not just the people from Crete. Zorba exists into every person, as I saw you in the beginning, what? regardless of university education, who wants to be successful and is not intimidated by failure. There are no Again. 20 failed uh, uh, attempts to, to come with an invention called the light. Edison said there are 20,000 steps to this invention. Damn. If you don't give up and you're not intimidated, you can succeed things in life. That's the message of the Christian Zionists. And I never realized it. And when I've heard the, 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 the National Conference so talking about this is up to you never guys. The man. If you are stressed oh, out, if you are disappointed, unless you are in a Zorba the Greek, and you will succeed. Thank you very much. I believe you can. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, boys. Any questions?